This is without a doubt the most difficult weapon to use in the game. Here's actually a graph I found of the learning curve for the dynamo. It feels powerful when you see all the ink come out, even though it's really not. You may think using dynamos like this. Put that hammer down. You want me to put the hammer down? But starting out, it's going to be more like this. So there are weapons in Splatoon with great ink efficiency, like the Aero Spray. Weapons with not so great ink efficiency, like the Splattershot Pro. And then there's the Dynamo, which has zero ink efficiency. Literally the worst in the game. It's also the slowest roller in the game. The rolling mechanic for the Dynamo is almost completely useless. You're a roller that can't roll. And in the rare instance that you are rolling towards an opponent, and they shoot you, you slow down even more so you can't even hit him. How fun! And being the slowest roller carries over to the windup of its fling. It'll hit the trigger, and then it feels like it'll take way too long for the ink to actually come out. And there's no way to cancel a swing after you ready it, so you're locked in, leaving you incredibly vulnerable. If someone's close up and you miss your swing, you're not getting another chance. And probably the biggest shortcoming of the Dynamo is that it's just so much worse now than it was in Splatoon 1. In the first game, it got nerfed about a billion times and it was still considered to be one of the best weapons in the game, a weapon that people liked having on the team and hated having go up against. In Splat 2, however, you have more reliability than an asset to your team. You're going to have to rely on your team for help with map control and movement around the stage, which in solo ranked, since everyone plays like a dumbass, it's not a good position to be in. There aren't a ton of reasons to use the Dynamo over other weapons, since it excels at nothing, and any team role that could potentially fill is done better by other weapons. We get a weakness! You gotta see this! Yeah, yeah. Okay, so after all those flaws, it's tough to justify using the Dynamo over other rollers, but there are a few positive characteristics that help distinguish it. For one, it's the longest range roller in both horizontal and vertical swings, which means it also has the largest one-hit KO range of any roller. It also has the most turf coverage per fling of any of the rollers, granted less coverage than Splatoon 1. Dynamo is also pretty good at splatting players using an inkjet or splashdown, provided you have enough time and space to get a good swing in. In addition, a lot of the benefit from using the Dynamo doesn't come from what it does in the game, it comes from how players perceive it. Not many players are going to try to approach a dynamo head on if they're flinging ink. There's a certain level of intimidation that comes with seeing a skilled dynamo player. In terms of using it yourself, it can be frustrating to use a difficult and unwieldy weapon, but there's an unrivaled level of satisfaction that comes with getting a lot of kills and winning matches with it. Splats feel way more satisfying when using the dynamo. It's like a... Uh, it's like having an asshole boyfriend who's really good at sex. You know, it's, it's shitty most of the time, but when it hits the spot, hits the spot. To master the dynamo, you've got to master when to use each type of fling. You've got the horizontal thick from Splatoon 1, which I'll be referring to as the Uno, and the new long-range vertical flick, which I'll be referring to as the Dose. In general, you're going to want to use the Uno more often than the Dose, since it covers a wider area and has a faster windup. You'll also have a greater chance of at least doing some damage with the Uno, so if you and a teammate are both engaging an opponent, you'll have a greater chance of getting the kill with the Uno. You can also extend the range of the Uno with a tactic from the first game that still works by hitting the trigger while you're still on the ground, then jumping near the end of the windup duration. You'll also want to have a good grasp on knowing the exact range of your one-hit KO zone for both swings at all times, and having a good gauge on how close your opponent is to that range. This is the closest you can be for the one-hit KO with the Uno, and here's the range for the Dose. The Dose is best used for intimidation on faraway opponents with short-range weapons, which is one of the few weapons that Dynamo has somewhat of an advantage over. If someone's coming straight at you, and you start dosing in their direction, they're going to have to think of something else. The Dose is also useful for the start of a match if you want to take mid quickly, since long swings can make you a nice path. With the Dynamo, you'll pretty much always be fleeing to cover turf, never actually rolling. If you find yourself rolling more than flinging, then congratulations, you're using the weapon incorrectly. In the heat of combat, 
ink can disappear deceptively quickly, so you want to keep both eyes on your ink tank. Don't even look at the game, just look at the tank and how empty it is all the time. Given the Dynamo's long wind-up time, you need to be able to anticipate your opponent's movements, which is a strategy that works for literally every weapon. And that skill only comes with a lot of experience. The Dynamo excels at staying in mid and zoning people out, making it difficult for them to approach. However, you also want to stay somewhat mobile instead of just staying in one spot and flinging. If you stay in one spot, or if you're too rhythmic with your flings, then your opponents will catch on and figure a way to get around your offense. I pretty much always use the gold dynamo over the original recipe, since ink mines are just the worst. However, an argument could be made for using the vanilla dynamo over the gold one in longer maps like Port Mackerel and in Tower Control, since Stingray is uh, it's pretty useful there. The dynamo is I in Turf War, pretty good at splat zones, good luck using a Rainmaker, and probably won't be good in Clam Clash or whatever the fuck it's called. Pro tip, activating the gold dynamo's ink armor is an instant refill, so wait until you're low on ink and then use it to keep flinging. Bonus tip! If you want to make this jump in Starfish, don't swing while mid-jump. You'll think you can make it, but you'll miss every time, like I do. Use any abilities you want, but I mean, come on, honestly, inks they remain. If you run three mains of it, then you'll go from five and a half flicks to nine on one full tank. And with three mains and two subs, you'll get ten full flicks. So, you know, do that. With your few leftover slots, you have a couple of good options, so pick what fits your playstyle. Ink Recovery Up is always good to help refill between cycles of flicking. Ink Resistance can help you from getting stuck in enemy ink. Swim Speed is always a good ability to have at any time and can help you stay a little bit more mobile and also get you out of jams if you're getting shot while you have an empty tank and need to get away and refill real quick. The Dynamo is such a high risk, high reward weapon that Quick Respawn might actually be a good ability for it and its Special Saver pairs pretty well with that. If you're like me and you like to use a lot of Splat Bombs, then the Ink Saver Sub is always good and Special Charge can help you get ink armor faster or if you insist on using the OG Dynamo, it's good for spamming Stingray which is a strategy that a lot of people seem to love to do. Bomb Defense Up can help you stay alive a little bit longer as opponents whose main weapon makes it difficult for them to approach you, they may chuck a bomb at you instead while you're winding up or to just get you to leave your position. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm not very good with this weapon. Here's some clips of a few good plays I made during the Fantasy vs. Sci-Fi Splatfest.